I'm glad you joined me for this video. We'll go over the top 10 hurtful things parents say to teens. I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. I'm a clinical psychologist and you can't shock me. Guess where this top 10 list came from? Parents, I've heard it. I've said some of these, regrettably. Let's start the countdown. Number 10. Let's start out with that one. It's probably one of the most common ones. Do this. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Okay, bossy pants. How does that sound to you if somebody's bossing you around like that? Teens are really, really sensitive to control. In fact, as I interview them in my office, that's the number one thing that ticks them off is that somebody's trying to control their life. Let's give up on all the bossy language and maybe replace it with something like this. Just try this on. I trust you to make good decisions for you. We're going to have to back that up with some discipline, but try it on. Coming in at number nine on today's list, if you don't blank, you can't blank. If you don't do your homework, you can't go to that party. That's an example. Hey, enough with the negativity already. What if we just change that to a positive phrase? When you do your homework, you can go to the party. Coming in at number eight is this phrase. You have to whatever. Sounds kind of like some of the others that we've already discussed. And it's usually not even true unless the next word is breathe. You have to breathe. But all of the other things that parents put behind that, your kids are going to challenge you on that and they'll feel controlled again. Instead, let's try some phrasing that's going to be a little more communication friendly with our kids. I invite you to whatever, or my expectation is whatever. That wording softens it up and it's going to be better received. Number seven on our countdown, I forbid you from whatever. Sounds like kind of a powerful power trip for the parent. You know what? If you throw this at your kids, not only are they going to be offended by that, but they will endeavor to prove you wrong. When you say you can't do this or you can't do that, oh yeah, watch me. I think a lot of defiance comes out in teens just because they feel challenged on their personal control. Other versions of this phrase come out like, you can't do that, or you will not do that, or around here, we don't, you get the picture. Instead, let's substitute, my preference is, or the expectation is, do you see how we've toned it down a bit, and it's not about an authoritarian, I am the boss, it's more of a statement of preference and expectation. It's gonna go over a lot better with your teen. Number six on our countdown today, why can't you be more like your brother, your sister, whoever? What an unfair comparison. You know, usually when we make comparisons like that, we're comparing someone's strengths to someone else's weaknesses. That's not fair. Your child has strengths and weaknesses. Instead of making those comparisons, let's shift our energy over to emphasizing and celebrating individual strengths and diversity. Coming in at number five, you make me so mad. I know that's a common one. That's way too much power and responsibility for a child. They don't control your feelings, you do. What if we replace that with something that takes a little personal ownership for our own feelings? Something like, I need a minute to get in control of my own feelings. You've probably got some other great ideas about how to take personal ownership for your own feelings. Would you share those in the comments below? Share some ideas about how we as parents can own our own feelings. Go. We're down to number four on our top 10 list. You always, or you never, neither of those are true. Think about it. My editor tells me to always avoid the word always and never use the word never because they're hardly ever true. Does your child really always yell and scream? No, there's times when they're sleeping. 
Does your child really never do their chores? No, the whole reason you're frustrated about it is because they have in the past and you're comparing what they're doing now to that. So it's hardly ever true. Let's change that one up to be more specific and more accurate. When you do this, it has this effect. Okay, so it might be when you avoid doing the dishes, I feel frustrated. Okay, do you hear how specific that is? And I like that format. When X happens, I feel Y. That's a really great way to get more specific about what's happening in the moment instead of generalizing it with these always and never words. What's wrong with you? <laughs> that one comes in at number three. I don't even need to say much about this. Is it even a question? It's not a question, it's a statement disguised as a question. It's a full-on accusation that something is very wrong with you. Do you feel how demeaning that is? Let's back off from focusing on what's wrong with you and get back to an important part of our family culture, which is that mistakes are valued. I just attended a training last week where our trainer encouraged us as a homework assignment to take the things we'd learned in the training, go out and try them and fail. Why would he want us to fail? Because you learn so much from failing and making mistakes. Let's have that be an honored part of our family culture. Mistakes are valued around here. We support you in your ongoing efforts. In another video I did here on the channel, Number two on our list today came in as the most damaging thing that you can psychologically say to a child. It's this, you can't handle it. Most parents are gonna hear that and think, oh, I never say that. And that may be true because we don't always say it with our words, but we say it every time we bail them out of an appropriate consequence that they legitimately earned. Why would we bail them out? Because we believe that they can't handle it? I tell you what, if your kids are capable of making their own decisions, they are also capable of handling whatever consequences come with those decisions. We need to stop rescuing them from their appropriate consequences. It sends the wrong message. What if instead we were to, with confidence, say to our children, you can handle anything that comes up in your life. This is an important component of overcoming anxiety. The common belief behind every anxiety is I can't handle it. So let's change the message. You can handle it. You've got a 100% track record so far, you've already handled everything and so have your kids. Topping off our list today at number one. I love you if or when it gives me the heebie-jeebies even to share that one with you. You know by now what's your job as a parent? It's to love them no matter what and even if. We would never send this message intentionally. I love you if you obey me. I love you when you do your homework. How sick is that? But we send it unintentionally sometimes by our behavior and the way that we show up. Remember, your job is to love them no matter what and even if. Parenting teens, it's not for the weak of heart, but you don't have to go at this alone. Our positive parenting community at Live On Purpose Central is there to support you and give you ideas and resources that will make this job a whole lot easier. Go.LiveOnPurposeCentral.com. Come check it out. Face locked onto the phone